All right, good morning. This is my first Cephalicon. I'm excited to be here. I pretty much don't know anyone here, so I look forward today to meeting the key contributors, the, those passionate about Ceph, as well as some of the partners in the community and the customers using it as well. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm really excited to be here. I think it's going to be a, a great two-day conference as we go forward. And personally, I look forward to learning a lot myself. Uh, so my name is Danny Mace. I'm with IBM. I lead the engineering team for IBM's storage software business, so our software-defined storage capabilities, our data protection capabilities, hybrid cloud, and I'm happy to say the Ceph team from Red Hat has joined it with IBM uh, to build an even stronger software-defined storage team. So I want to get the IBM sort of focus uh, right away, and I'm going to cover that in just a few minutes, but first let me let uh, Kyle introduce himself, not Josh. <laughs> so I, I told you I'm learning Kyle, everyone's name. not Josh. Um, so I, <laughs> I, I came over from, um, from Red Hat, joined uh, IBM as part of the transition at the beginning of the year, and then you know, dating back a while back, originally from, from the Ink Tank uh, group. But yeah, I'm a principal portfolio architect for Ceph offerings at IBM. Okay, all right, great. And today we're gonna cover where we see IBM's contributions going, where we see the community uh, capabilities to expand on, and maybe share a little bit about what's, what's IBM's hopes and dreams for Ceph now that we've transitioned this into IBM. So first let me talk about why, <clears throat> excuse me, why we moved uh, the storage business from Red Hat into the storage business from IBM. And I was the lead on this for the IBM side, so maybe the best way to do it is talk about the journey rather than just get right to the sort of the bottom line around it. Uh, but first, IBM is in the storage business. We have both hardware, <clears throat> so, sorry, excuse me, we have both hardware and software in our portfolio, and we're working hard to grow our software-defined storage business in IBM. We've continued to invest in this space and make it a bigger portion of our, our long-term success in the IBM portfolio. As we started looking ar around where storage is going, we're focused certainly on software-defined storage. We see that as the future. That's also here today, as we'll talk about. And as IBM, we're one of the leaders in, in, in the world around Kubernetes. You might not know this, but IBM is the world's largest Kubernetes software vendor. When we acquired Red Hat three years ago, we doubled the size of the OpenShift catalog just by bringing the IBM software on top of it. So IBM obviously is very focused on hybrid cloud, what you can do with OpenShift and Kubernetes around it. And we built out those capabilities. As we started collaborating more with the Red Hat team, they were also building some great capabilities for storage based on Ceph and and for Kubernetes. And we started partnering with them, realizing that we want to work together more closely over time. And we started in interacting with the business team at Red Hat, saying, should we do more together? And Brent Compton, I'm not sure where you are here in the room, there in the back. Uh, we reached out as the business leader in the storage business in Red Hat, and we started talking about, could we do even more together with IBM and Red Hat than we currently are? And uh, Brent, being a, a great business leader for the storage business in Red Hat, recognized that not only can we do great work in the container space, but we have an untapped resource potentially with Ceph that we could really expand and grow. And Red Hat has a very laser focus on their business. They are a hybrid cloud platform team with RHEL, OpenStack, and OpenShift. And they were really focusing the contributions in Ceph around ODF and using that in a container environment. And they were becoming a little less interested in going after the broader storage market. In IBM, we have a dedicated storage business with thousands of sellers sell selling storage across uh, the enterprises across the world. And we could really potentially take Ceph into IBM and have that be a foundation for our software-defined storage strategy and have a dedicated team that's taking that to be successful in the market. So we both agreed that this was a great thing for IBM as a whole, it was a great thing for Red Hat, and we think it's a great thing for Ceph and ODF and the other associated open source projects in the storage business. So on January 1st, we moved the engineers from Red Hat and IBM, and they joined the broader IBM organization. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go forward about now what changes might you expect from, from this. So first, we really think we can unlock Ceph and IBM. It was a, I believe it's a great resource, a great set of capabilities that have been built out over the last 15 years. We can build container storage around it. We can go after 
new use cases of, of a converged file block and object system. And Kyle will take you through a little bit more details of our initial thoughts of where we see our contributions in Ceph going, going forward. In addition, IBM is very focused on hybrid cloud, being able to put workloads on-prem, off-prem, across data centers, being able to move data, replicate data, DR, all of those scenarios in software-defined storage in a hybrid cloud environment are areas we can also bring some of the IBM expertise in, in public cloud services to bear and some contributions to Ceph around that. So you'll see these things come out as we go forward in, in a little bit more detail. But first, I have my don't panic slide. So cha a, cha a change of guard from uh, Red Hat to IBM. Yes, the associates are going to move over. They have moved over. They came over intact. We're still doing software development in the same way that we're used to. But most importantly, we've committed that Ceph will remain 100% open source and 100% upstream first open source. Rook, ODF, re related projects around that as well. So we're not going to change any of that. If you're familiar with IBM, we were a leader in the open source industry. We helped make Linux the success it is, it is today by donating technology to that and its inception and the patents around that. We've been working in, in communities like Eclipse Foundation that we founded 15 years ago as well for being the development tool space. And then as Java has become a more and more open source focused, that also lives in the Eclipse org today around that. And IBM is the pri one of the primary contributors along with Red Hat to the open source Java environment. And as we've expanded into AI, a lot of our AI development tools and runtimes are built on open source, but also contributions from IBM around that. So IBM has a very vibrant and long history in open source. And we, we, com we are committed that Ceph will be a part of that open source family in, in IBM for, for as long as that, that we see the future of Ceph, which is forever. So don't panic. Nothing's changing. The team came over. They're still doing what they're doing. And, but we feel like a little bit of a kid in a candy store in my American slang where we've got this great technology and now what can we do with it to take it to the next level. And so we're going to talk about that in just, just a minute uh, as we go forward. Now, we're not new to Ceph either. IBM has been investing in Ceph over the last three years, and we made numerous contributions to that. A lot of this work was done in IBM Research and some of the other storage uh, parts of IBM. So we're not new to contributing to Ceph, and now we're just going to expand our contributions as we go forward. And then if we stop and we look at the, the state of Ceph overall from my perspective, it's got a long 15-year history. There's been major capabilities added over the last 15 years. We have a very vibrant community. It's great to see everyone here. It's great to have a chance to get everyone together and increase, increase that, that collaboration that we have to make open source even stronger. And that you can see where are the charts over here. We've got a good, a good set of contributors, not just IBM and not, not just the former Red Hat team, but across other industries as well, which is great to see that, that level of contribution to keep Ceph vibrant and growing overall. Now, as we get on to the, what's off to the right of this chart, where's it going to go next? I'll ask Kyle to take over from here and give some of our initial thoughts of where we see the value of the IBM contributions in the Ceph community. So uh, a few years ago, well, many years ago, there was originally just CephFS, right? So you had a Rados cluster, and you know, if you wanted block devices, you put them on the file system. If you wanted objects, you had a file system. Um, and kind of the first thing that came after CephFS was the Rados Gateway. Um, and the whole idea with the Rados Gateway was Rados you know, is, is, is an object store, right? It has its own object storage API. Um, but one of the things that occurred to us was that there was a growing, a rapidly growing ecosystem around the S3 APIs and that we could leverage that ecosystem um, instead of trying to build and take on the burden of, of building an entirety of an ecosystem around, say, the Liberados APIs, right? There, there are other applications that directly code to Liberados, but they're far less, uh, far less in number than, say, uh, Amazon S3. And then shortly after um, we started experimenting with uh, the object store, um, RBD came to be. And then it was around this time that there was started to be a lot of integration um, around like a platform strategy 
where um, we integrated you know, heavily into OpenStack, all the different components, Glance, Keystone, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and then we kind of repeated that same integration strategy um, with, in the context of Kubernetes, right? And, you know, uh, entry drivers, flex volumes, uh, CSI drivers, operator, like through Rook. And that has um, turned out pretty well. Um, if, uh, if you look at the OpenStack survey, right, even over the last year, and you look at the number of people that are using Ceph in the context of o OpenStack, um, we've done very, very well there. Um, if you look in, uh, for OpenShift, there was a recent uh, evaluator group report that ODF, um, which is you know, basically Ceph uh, for, for OpenShift, um, is, is the number one storage offering. And so we, you know, we're doing very well in the context of you know, OpenShift and Kubernetes. Um, but we always wanted, we always wanted more, and so that was, that was kind of one of the interesting things about coming over to IBM, where they have lots of storage sellers. We wanted, you know, if I go back or you know reflect over ten years ago, we, we wanted to be the, the the future of which the future of storage. We wanted to be the Linux of storage, and I think um, to get to that level of ubi ubiquity, one of the things that we've been thinking about is, is expanding beyond that, and I think part of that is 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 being able to tap into broader ecosystems, not having to have, you know, the 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 burden of of building um, ecosystems necessarily around you know native clients. Native clients are great and useful and, and and optimized for performance, but when you want to when you want to expand and get into new new areas, I, I think they're really important. Um, so um, it's not it's not uh, terribly new, but. Um, uh, NFS, uh, providing NFS capabilities out of CephFS. This is something that we had, um, you know, even supported in, in past downstream releases of, of, of Red Hat Ceph. But we really want to put a, a renewed emphasis on, on in making NFS better um, uh, and as, as a protocol dialect to interact with CephFS file systems. And then finally, um, over the last couple of years, there's been a, a, a lot of dedicated work on building an NVMe over Fabric, or NVMe TCP target um, uh, backed by RBD. And that, that, that allows us to get into places where we couldn't get before, right? There's a lot of um, like proprietary hypers, hypervisors where you know, there's very, very little chance that we're gonna get a native, you know, native drivers built into them. And so this is a way that we can kind of get into those ecosystems. And ultimately, we want to build we want to build these interfaces to be best in class. We want to have the best in class S3. We want to have the best in class NFS, and we want to have the best in class TCP, uh, NVMe over TCP. And what we think what this will help us do is it'll help us be able to go after the primary storage market, be able, be able to go after with a converged offering where you can get block, file, and object from from a single system, and and have it be best in class. Thanks. Thank you, Kyle.